You know what would be really cool? If I was playing Final Fantasy XV right now. Or if I was playing The Last Guardian. Like, those, those would be pretty cool games to play. But, alas, we're not. And we're not going to soon. It depends what your definition of soon is, I guess. Now, they were supposed to come out sooner than expected. I believe Final Fantasy was supposed to come out this month. And uh, Last Guardian was supposed to come out next month in October. But in case you all don't know, both of those games were delayed by two months. With first Final Fantasy XV being delayed after how many times as well as the other game which was last guardian and while we're talking about this stuff at least those have release dates set on them let's not talk about other things that have kind of become vaporware at this point like i don't know kingdom hearts 3 but to be honest that's not even as bad as half-life 3 i'm not a huge half-life fan like i've played through the first two i thought they were pretty cool I'm not completely obsessed with it, but I recognize what it did for gaming, and people have just been waiting eons for that. And sometimes delays can be great. I know there's been several games that have been delayed several times, they've been awesome. Witcher 3 is one of those, for example, that was a pretty quality title. Well, as there's other games like Duke Nukem Forever that suffered delay after delay after delay after delay after delay, and we got the end product. We probably shouldn't have gotten that specific end product. Now see, for the most part, I'm not really against game delays. Due to the fact that they are annoying and you're promised a date and then it's pushed back and you're promised a date and it's pushed back. But I'd rather have, you know, that quality finished product and if a developer says that they're working on getting it to be better, then I wouldn't really mind that too much. Now granted, it also depends on what we're dealing with. There are some games, as I said, that have been delayed and they've been great, while as others have also utilized this, like for example Watch Dogs, where they put a six month delay on that, and they said, we're just going to polish up the game a little bit more, and the game came out and it wasn't really that polished. In fact, it was kind of bland. Like, literally, it, d it didn't look as nice. It got a major graphical downgrade, as well as several other things as well, too. It was just, you know, performance and all that stuff. And let's, let's not talk about the whole parody thing, either. That's a whole other different topic. But listen, to keep me going, there's one thing I always think of with delays. Not only that developers are hopefully, you know, with a glass half full perspective looking at it, trying to make the game better for us, taking that extra development time. But most of the time, unless it's like a two year delay or something like that, most of the time you're now seeing delays of a few weeks or a month or two. And my logic is, especially with some games that we've been waiting a long time for, even entire console generations for, like Final Fantasy XV and Last Guardian, I've waited how many years for this game Another two months isn't going to hurt. I mean, with these games, we literally, we've been looking forward to these two specific games I'm talking about since the PlayStation 3. In fact, a friend of mine even bought a PlayStation 3 because he knew that Kingdom Hearts 3 was guaranteed going to come out on it, and then he heard about Final Fantasy 13 and Final Fantasy Versus 13, which that was originally what 15 was, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna get that on PS3. He ended up learning never to buy a console because it was a guarantee that a sequel was going to come out on that console. And I think many other people did as well too. I also know a few other people personally that said they didn't have a PS3, but if Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced for PS3 and it was going to come out for it, they would buy one like that. And those friends also do not own PS3s. Now, patience is also definitely a virtue as well too. And time is one of those things, it's like the only thing in life you really don't get back. But then again, I'm also from a time where, at least in my generation, I was kind of on the tail end of dial-up. I still remember dial-up. I still remember using that to download a song at a time. Then we got broadband, and it would take, I don't know, two minutes to get that same thing. And now that's just obscenely slow. You can download an entire album in seconds on my phone. It's great. I, I love that. But the thing I also cite about this, this is kind of, you know, deviating off the game thing, is my all-time favorite band is Tool. Now, they are known for taking years in between their albums to release a new album, and the last album we got was in early 2005. 
So it's been over 11 years at this point and we haven't gotten any new album and we've constantly been teased with they're in the works, they're in the works, something's happening. So just like the new Tool album and just like these games, it's more I will believe they are coming out when I have them in my hands and for the most part just really won't pay too much attention to rumors. They do pop up on my newsfeed or on Twitter or on other random websites that I use, but for the most part it's like, okay, something's being developed. I'll believe it when I buy it. Now because of that, the reason why I interjected the whole Tool album in there is because that has also helped out with these games. People have been waiting for The Last Guardian since its announcement in, I don't know, 2006, 2007. Uh, same thing with Final Fantasy Vs. 13. I want to say that got announced in maybe 2008, 2007, something like that. As I said, I've been waiting over 11 years for a new Tool album, so... If I can wait for that and still be patient, I can be patient for these other games. But again, it is annoying when you're given an announcement date and you're given a release date and it gets pushed back and back and back and back. Now there's also something else I want to do for the second segment of this video here. And this kind of pertains to a next point I have. If I get annoyed with this, I kind of look back and I'm just like, I have a massive game backlog going across multiple different platforms, so technically if I want to play a game, I should be able to choose a game to play, and I shouldn't really be bored. So I should have plenty of games to play for the next few months while I'm waiting for these two other games. Now, I have not said this on the channel, but one thing I've been trying to keep as a goal to myself for this year is to beat one game per month. And that doesn't sound that bad, it sounds actually pretty easy. And my definition of beating a game is getting through a single player component or a campaign component up until the point where you beat a last level and the credits roll and that classifies as beating a game for me. So whether it be a 20 hour game or a 30 minute game, it's going to count. So take what you will on that. And spoiler alert, but at the end of the year, sometime at the beginning of next year, I'm actually going to do a video covering all of the games that I beat this year because I thought that'd be kind of fun. And so far, I've actually kept to it pretty well. Every single month, I've been able to beat minimum one game. And if you're someone like me who you kind of try to have a social life, you also work 40 hours a week, and then you do all this other hobby stuff, and you still like playing your games, it can be easier said than done to beat one game a month. That's why I've tried to at least still have that, because I love video games and I still want to play them. I don't really want to go on a really long gaming hiatus. But I decided, you know it would be fun and to put everything into perspective, I'm just going to pick two platforms, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And I'm going to grab my physical games that are in my collection right now that I have not completed. Now, this does not include my digital games. This also doesn't include, you know, any games that I have sold off or anything. So I'm sure there's other games in there on other platforms that I've completed or games that I have already completed and I've sold off or given to friends or whatever, or maybe they're being borrowed. But point is, I'm going to be covering in here the games that I haven't finished on those two platforms. You know it'd be really cool if I was playing Final Fantasy 15 right now, or if I was playing The Last Guardian. Like those, those would be pretty cool games to play. But alas, we're not, and we're not going to soon. It depends what your definition of soon is, I guess. Now they were supposed to come out sooner than expected. I believe Final Fantasy was supposed to come out this month, and uh, Last Guardian was supposed to come out next month in October. But in case you all don't know, both of those games were delayed by two months, with first Final Fantasy XV being delayed after how many times, as well as the other game, which was Last Guardian. And while we're talking about this stuff, at least those have release dates set on them. Let's not talk about other things that have kind of become vaporware at this point, like, I don't know, Kingdom Hearts 3. But to be honest, that's not even as bad as Half-Life 3. I'm not a huge Half-Life fan, like... I've played through the first two, I thought they were pretty cool, I'm not completely obsessed with it, but I recognize what it did for gaming, and people have just been waiting eons for that. And sometimes delays can be great. I know there's been several games that have been delayed several times, they've been awesome. Witcher 3 is one of those, for example, that was a pretty quality title. Well, as there's other games like Duke Nukem Forever that suffered delay after delay after delay after delay after delay, and we got the end product. We probably shouldn't have gotten that specific end product. 
Now see, for the most part, I'm not really against game delays. Due to the fact that they are annoying and you promise a date and then it's pushed back and you promise a date and it's pushed back. But I'd rather have, you know, that quality finished product and if a developer says that they're working on getting it to be better, then I wouldn't really mind that too much. Now granted, it also depends on what we're dealing with. There are some games, as I said, that have been delayed and they've been great, while as others have also utilized this, like for example Watch Dogs, where they put a six month delay on that, and they said we're just going to polish up the game a little bit more, and the game came out and it wasn't really that polished. And it's two games. I have already finished one of them. I've finished Heavy Rain, I actually finished on PS3, finished it again on PS4, and I have Beyond Two Souls right here, which I did finish on PS3, but I really want to play the remastered version. And then there's others like Rare Replay, where this is literally 30 games. I'm probably never going to finish this. But that introduces another thing. There's also multiple games I like to replay as well too. For example, the Silent Hill franchise. I've been going back through, I've been playing those games and I've been having fun with them. And then I'm not on these platforms all the time. Recently, I've actually been on my PS1. I hooked up my Frame Meister out here. I hooked up an old PS1 I had and I've been playing games on there. Played through the original Silent Hill. Fantastic game, dude. But what I'm trying to say here is unless you are a person that only has like two games in your collection, you probably have a backlog, I don't know, it might be more than mine, it might be less than mine, but whatever it is, having a backlog isn't all that bad, because I'll tell you this, looking at all this here, I shouldn't ever be bored of video games. I should never question what I want to play, and I should definitely have at least a few titles here to keep me busy for the next few months before the new games that I want to come out. But anyways, aside from showing you all this, how do you deal with game droughts, or how do you deal with waiting for a game? And also, what are you currently playing? Because I've showed you how I'm dealing with waiting on these games and all that stuff, and the games I'm currently playing right now are Salt Hill 2 on the HD collection. A lot of people might complain about it being a port, especially on 360. Listen, I'd prefer to play on the 360 than the PS3, and I'd rather have the nicer graphics. That's, that's kind of just me. And I also picked up Attack on Titan, which I'm playing through right now, and is not that bad of a game. Optimization absolutely sucks on it, but it's not that bad. And I don't know too much about the show, but my friend Tanner really, really wanted me to pick it up so he'd have co-op partners, so here we are. But anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. And if you enjoyed this video, a like would be appreciated. And if you absolutely hated it, you can dislike it as well, too. Your choice.